All right, guys, out here at the range, me and Jamie, we just got a new rifle. So Jamie's got a new rifle. He's got a red dot optic on it, and the rifle hasn't been zeroed yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get a zero. So we're 50 yards out from the target, and that's a good distance to zero at. There's kind of two schools of thought out there. For the most part, there's some variations to it, either a 50 yard zero or a 25 meter zero. Typically in military, most of the military does a 25 meter zero, and then other folks will typically do a 50 yard zero. So we're gonna do a 50 yard zero today. So so the theory here is with a 50 yard zero, once we're zeroed at 50 yards, in theory, from about zero yards to about 300 yards, 250, 300 yards in that ballpark, we're gonna be on target for the most part with a rifle like this. Once we start getting past that distance, we have to compensate for things a little bit. And of course, like we've talked about in other episodes, we do have holdover and offset if we're at extreme range. But a good 50 yard zero will get the job done. That's what I recommend doing for a, a good battle a rifle, a sporting rifle, AR-15 style rifle like this, getting a good solid 50 yard zero is a good way to go. And then just understand where you're gonna shoot before that and past that. So we're gonna do this at 50 yards and we're gonna do it from the prone. Go ahead, get down in the prone position. This will be prone supported. Now, since it is a zero, guys, you're gonna to wanna to be in the most stable position possible. I don't wanna have any, any human error getting into my zero at all. So I wanna be in a good solid prone position like we've talked about before, prone supported. In this case, since we don't have anything supporting the front of the gun, Jamie's resting a magazine on the ground. I like to use five shot strings to do a good zero. So we're gonna do a five shot string on zero so he's nice and stable down here. And once I give him the command to go ahead, he's gonna take his Time, he's gonna fire five shots on target and then we'll clear it out and see where it's at. Y'all set, Jamie? Okay. All right. Whenever you're ready, take your time. Give me five shots. Yeah, go ahead, safe up. You can work yourself up to kneeling position. And let's go ahead and get that magazine out and sit right there and lock your bolt to the rear. So folks, what we're gonna do as Jamie's clearing this rifle out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk that range and we're gonna check it out. So uh, we could use binoculars if you want to. I actually like to walk right up to the target, then I can mark it and see what's going on. So let's go ahead down there and see what we got to work with. All right, guys, we just knocked out our first five shots at 50 yards, doing a 50 yard zero. We're using this defensive target and we're using this little donut as our defensive, uh, or I'm sorry, we're using this little donut up here as our zero target. Now, a lot of zero targets out there you can simply buy. It's a great target because it's got that donut, might as well use it. You can get a traditional bullseye target or an actual, they have zero targets designed for these red dots and iron sights. So we're just using this and in the field, this is gonna work just fine for our needs. So we checked this out, we shot a five shot group, a nice tight group out there from five shots so obviously a good quality rifle and we got a shooter that obviously knows what he's doing and he's driving tacks down here so we got a nice group off to the left a little bit so it looks like we're gonna have to go to the right a little bit uh, so we'll use our manufacturer's recommendations for adjusting the windage on this particular red dot we'll go back up there we'll make that correction to bring it to the right and uh, we'll see what it looks like cool all right Jamie let's get back down the knee right in here Let's talk about these sight corrections a little bit. All right, so we noticed we're over to the left a little bit, so we're gonna go ahead and make our corrections. Now folks, something to think about here, there's a lot of different type of optics and scopes out here. In this case, we're running just a, just a red dot right here. It does have elevation adjustments and windage adjustments. I'm not gonna get too detailed on exactly how many clicks and all that good stuff, because depending on what type of optic or scope you had, it's gonna vary a little bit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the manufacturer's recommendations on this particular red dot to make the the adjustments that we need to. In this case, we're a couple inches off to the left, so we're gonna just simply move the sight to the right a little bit so we can compensate for that and get on target. So Jamie, let's go ahead and unscrew this here. Most of them will have a, uh, a cap, and in this case it has a cap. This uh, SIG Romeo 5 optic has this cap, and it's got the adjuster built right into it, so we can get it right on there and we'll click. So we'll go six clicks to the right, good. And we'll see what that looks like. And again, manufacturer's recommendations is what you're gonna to wanna to use on these optics, so you're making sure you're dialing in things correctly. All right, so let's uh, see where we're at. Go ahead and uh, lock and load there. We'll prone back out. 
and we'll take our time with another five shots and see what we're looking like. All right. All right, Jamie, whenever you're ready, you're feeling good, take your time, and let's get five shots on target. Good, you can go ahead, work up to a knee and clear it out. All right. So we're gonna go down, check it out again. How many times you do this is gonna depend how your zero is coming along. Typically I find maybe three, four times going back and forth, we can dial it in and get it pretty much locked down to where we need to do it. So let's go ahead down range, check it out. All right. Looks pretty good. So that's our second group. As you can see, uh, we moved it over to the right. We made that windage adjustment with this site, moved it to the right. So it looks like, uh, windage wise, looks like we're pretty much spot on. <laughs> Driving tax, shooting a real nice five shot group there. So looks like uh, looks like we've locked on the elevation. So I'm thinking wind, uh, or I'm sorry, it looks like we've locked on our windage. So it looks like our elevation needs to be adjusted a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that elevation adjustment from back out there 50 yards out, bring that down. And Let's see if we can drop them right in the center. All right, that looked pretty good. We're getting there. I think just a couple more adjustments, so we'll be on it. So that one, guys, we moved it to the right. Looks like our, our windage is pretty much spot on. However, it looks like we want to come down just a little bit. So we'll, on this one, we're going to adjust the elevation screw. So typically on an optic or site, you're going to have windage, which is left and right, and elevation, which is up and down. And in this case, we just need to come down a little bit. Like I said, with this particular optic, it's got the adjuster on the back side of the screw, and it tells me exactly what way to go. I love this. You know, most manufacturers are going to mark it. Something's going to be up with an arrow or left with an arrow, something like that, really going to keep us on track so we know what we're doing and not causing us extra work. So I'll go ahead and make that correction, and we'll go down, bring it down just a little bit. There we go. So let's see what that looks like. All right, Jamie, go ahead, lock and load. And once you're locked and loaded, let's get yourself down in the prone position, take your time, and let's uh, go ahead and knock out another five shots, 50 yards here. Yeah, let's safe that thing out. Go down range, check it out. I'm assuming folks are pretty locked on this one from here. I think we're we think we're on it, but we'll go check it out. All right. There we go. That's what we're looking for, guys. So third volley worked out good. Like I said, sometimes you got to go back and forth three, four, five, six times to dial it in. Obviously, Jamie's a solid shooter. So using this red dot, uh, red dot optic in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations, we made adjustments. Started off over here. We made our windage adjustment by going to the right. There's our second group. Looked like we had to come down to dial it in in the middle of that donut. Made our correction down and just dialed right in, dialed spot on. So now what we'll do, we'll go back there and we'll talk about how to do the same process with your iron sights. Good. So Jamie did some good shooting there and we managed to get right on target. So basically what we did folks, we did three volleys and we got ourselves where we need to be. Like I said, you may have to do this three, four, five, six times to really get dialed in to where you're gonna be. So it's a 50 yard zero. At this point, guys, we've got our red dot all locked in. Point of aim is point of impact at 50 yards. I wanna make sure my caps are locked down and I'm good to go. Now what we need to do is we need to think about these things right here. So we got backup sights on the gun. Not a bad idea to take this opportunity to go ahead and dial these in. What I like to do to make this real easy is this. Watch this, folks. I'll go ahead and uh, have Jamie put the magazine in there, but not lock and load. We'll just use it as a monopod. Go ahead and get down on the gun in a prone supported position. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and get our iron sights worked up. With your rear sight, 
Your rear sights for flip-up sights will typically have a small aperture, a small hole, and a large aperture, a bigger hole. The aperture you're gonna to wanna to use, the hole that you're gonna to wanna to use to get a good zero is gonna be the small one. So that small one's gonna be for long range. So we've go, go ahead and flip up our backup sight. We got in the small aperture and we've got our front sight up. So here's what I like to do really to make our life easy. So it's a new rifle, never fired this before. We got our red dot all dialed in. So that's locked in, that's good to go. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is get our, our iron sights lined up. Now what I like to do just to get as close as I can before I go ahead and nail up a shot is I'll go ahead and keep my dot on. I'll look through my rear sight onto my front sight, line my sights up correctly as I would and use the buddy system. So Jamie, go ahead, line your sights up, your rear sight and your front sight. So we have the tip of the front sight pose dead centered in the crosshair basically of the rear sight aperture. Now, what we need to find out is first, let's see how the elevation looks. How's it look? Do we look like we need to go left or right with the rear sight? Uh, a little bit right. So Jamie's saying it looks like the rear sight needs to go to the right a little bit to line up with the red dot. We know the red dot's on guys, so we're using um, the red dot as kind of our guide to initially get there. He's saying it looks like it needs to go to the right a little bit. I'll click that in. You tell me when it looks about right. Looks good. Good, we're good about there. So uh, windage now is good? Yes. All right, so now we've got the windage lined up pretty good using the red dot simply as a guide. Now, how about elevation? Need to go up or down or does it look good? Uh, that looks good. Excellent, looks good. If we did have to make an adjustment, guys, I could simply use the tip of my uh, around or I could use a front sight adjustment tool and simply move that front sight up or down to make sure it's pretty damn close to the front of that or to the tip of that red dot. And what I'm trying to do, guys, with, a, with the red dot in relation to the front sight is I'm trying to just kind of lollipop it. So that red dot is right at the tip of that front sight post for this kind of battle sight zero procedure that we're doing right now. But Jamie's saying that looks pretty good? Yes. So it looks good. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power down the optic. Good, the optic's off. So now what we'll do is we're gonna repeat the procedure we did earlier with our red dot, but just with our iron sights. So the red dot's off, their iron sights are, are flipped up, they're on, so to speak. So we're gonna basically shoot a five shot string, go down there, check it out, and come back and forth and work through that process. So that's how you zero a modern sporting rifle, AR-15 style rifle, pretty straightforward. Remember, there's a lot of different variations of optics and scopes out there, so you're really gonna wanna read what your manual manufacturer recommends on um, procedures on how to zero that piece of equipment and same thing with your iron sights there are different variations of those out there i like using the red dot or my you know scope or whatever i'm using i like to use the red dot to kind of get pretty close with my iron sights and then i can fine tune it from there with those off so that's how to zero your defensive rifle